Story 1. I rent out my house through a service that includes insurance when it's in use. The insurance doesn't cover when I lend my house to friends and family since they're not paying. I have regular homeowner's insurance for that. My brother used my home with his family just after New Year's. It's a slow time, and I wouldn't lose out on much income. My nephew stayed up late one night and didn't go out for breakfast with his family, so he decided to make himself some food. He started a kitchen fire, and he freaked out and called 911 instead of using the fire extinguisher in the kitchen. He's a younger teen, so I can't blame him too much. The smoke damage will cost about eight, seven hundred dollars to fix. I told my brother he could take his time paying me back. He said he wasn't going to pay for an innocent mistake. I needed the house in order, so I just fixed everything. I didn't go through insurance since I don't want my rates to go up. I was obviously upset, so I posted about the fire and how angry I was at my brother. All my friends and family took the side of the innocent angel. They said it was unfair for me to expect that much from him when he could have rented a hotel for a quarter of the price. So I agreed. From now on, my house was off limits unless they rented it out or I was there, and they came as my guests. Since I only use the house with my family, they can rent it all or use the only empty bedroom. It has a twin bed and a crib. Now the howling started that I was being unfair to them for something that wasn't their fault. I offered to take up a collection from them to cover the repairs or the increased insurance premiums and most of them shut up. I directed them all to my brother. He got pretty angry at me for blaming him for the situation. I said I wasn't about to send a mob after my nephew. I bought the house after I got a settlement from a worksite accident. I used the income to supplement the difference between what I used to earn at my old job and what I do now. So my question is, am I the idiot for telling everyone who has a problem with me charging rent or stuffing a family into a room meant for two small children to talk to my brother about it? Not the idiot. Your brother deserves to be the one dealing with the flack. If I were him, I would have at least offered to pay the increased insurance premiums, or that about monthly until the repairs were paid off, if he didn't go through insurance. He's the one who wrecked it for everyone, and anyone who took his side I would not trust in my house. This is a perfect example of no good deed goes unpunished. Your brother is responsible for paying for the repairs and the damage his kid caused. I can't get over that a teen started a kitchen fire and just watched it burn, waiting for the fire department to show up. Maybe get an adult or use a fire extinguisher. The dad might be legally responsible, but it's the dumb idiot teen's fault. That's plenty old enough to cook food without burning down the house. People are more stupid today. Everyone's the idiot. Insurance is there for a reason. If you're never going to use it because you don't want your rates to go up, then what's the point of paying premiums in the first place? Just don't have it. Contrary to popular belief, your premiums do not skyrocket if you make a claim. Also, for argument's sake, let's say they did increase your payments by $20 a month. It would take 400 months to add up to $8,000 of damages. $20 a month isn't that life-changing, but paying $8,000 in one lump sum is hard. It was an accident. That's what insurance is there for. You should have used the insurance, and if your rates went up, ask your brother just to cover the monthly costs of that. This is all very unnecessary. Three years ago, I met and eventually married my current husband. He had two children and I had one. This pertains to the oldest daughter who is now a young teen. My husband has 50-50 custody of his kids. When we got married, we opted to move into a house I already own due to the housing market conditions. My house has four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a large, partially finished basement. My husband's ex has always been very manipulative and vindictive. We met years after their divorce, and they've been divorced and separated for over 12 years. His ex has even gone so far as to stalk me and become friends with my ex to gain more information about me. I recently discovered that my husband's daughter had gone through the house because her mom told her to try to find what we were hiding. She stated she was looking for anything that might be illegal, and even described the various spots she looked in and what she found. 
areas such as a closet under the stairs, the attic, and the wood box. She was even going through some very personal boxes containing items from deceased loved ones. My problem is I'm getting angrier about this. My husband thinks my reaction is overkill, as we had previously joked about her looking around, but we could never prove anything. I chopped most of it up to curiosity, but a small part of me felt maybe she wasn't so innocent. After finding out why she was snooping, I explained to her it wasn't right. She shrugged her shoulders and said, well, do you have something to hide? This only made me angrier, but I played it off as a joke as I didn't want to say what was going through my mind. My husband said he talked to her, but I think there should be some consequences for snooping around because their mom said to do so. Even as a young teen, she's old enough to know something is wrong. We haven't given any of the kids reason to think we're engaged in any illicit activities. No friends coming around, no unexplained cash, no mood swings, we don't smoke and rarely drink. The other child has stated she knows that is wrong, and that the mom is very crazy in how she acts towards me. It doesn't even pay to attempt to communicate with his ex, she'll deny it. So, am I the idiot for becoming angrier at the snooping child? I can't help thinking she may have taken stuff as well. I know she'll play clueless and start with the big crocodile tears, but I think she's more manipulative and the cluelessness is an act. Also, should I have expected my husband to have given punishment to her? Not the idiot. I can't believe your teen actually admits to snooping and your husband isn't upset by this. I'd be setting him up in a separate bedroom so that I could put a good lock on my door. This is a massive red flag for your husband. If he's going to let his ex abuse and violate you through his weaponized daughter, you will have zero peace until she's out of the house, and she will grow up being twisted inside by what her mother is doing to her and her father is permitting. And it won't end with her growing up. He will want to see his grandchildren, but she'll end up hating both of you, or he will save his relationship with her by throwing you to the wolves and prioritizing her so that he can have continued access to her children someday. The why do you have something to hide question is so manipulative. I would worry about what the child will do next, like being talked into planting meds or adult material of some sort or abuse in general. The ex is desperate to find something and could manipulate the child further, stopping at nothing, especially since the father is doing absolutely nothing about it. That sounds like her mother talking. The mother sounds like she's manipulated her daughter to become adversarial if confronted by providing this lame argument. Everyone's the idiot. She's being manipulated and pressured by her toxic mother and put in a very difficult position in the middle of her parents' divorce. It's not easy to say no to a parent like that and a young teen is not old enough to understand what's going on. You can take lots of therapy. You and your husband need to take action to protect and educate your daughter on how to handle her mother's demands better, not punish her. Fiancé and I are getting married this year and our venue is in a cave system. We're both active explorers and this is our dream venue. How it works is you will get married in the opening of the cave, then go down a set of stairs that bring you to a big open area in the cave. You then have the option to stay in the area or do a cave tour. It's extremely cool and guests can't get into areas they're not supposed to do to gates that will sound an alarm if you go near them. Also, they only allow a total of 15 guests to have a small wedding. Overall, it is unique, and we want to do this. We understand that when inviting people if they're not comfortable, they will not attend. It's a unique experience, and I'm not pressuring anyone to go. Everyone we've invited seems to be cool about it. My mother is super excited. I invited my sister who told me she couldn't do it, that her claustrophobia would make it impossible. I told her that was okay and that we could record it or Zoom if she wanted to see it. I don't want her uncomfortable. This is where the argument started. She's angry we would do a wedding she can't attend. She called me a huge jerk and I said that I wouldn't change the wedding. I told her this was our dream wedding and we were not changing it. I'm getting messages from uninvited people that I'm also a huge jerk. Edit. It's a venue, not a random cave. Of course, the venue has ways to handle disabilities just like every venue. Edit. My sisters and I are not close. This was the first time I ever heard about it. I have seen her in a few tight places, 
and this was the first time I've heard about it. She got an invite because she's my sister. If we weren't related, she probably wouldn't have gotten one. Not the idiot. The wedding is for you, not her. Besides, it sounds like the ceremony will be outside the cave, and she should be able to attend without getting claustrophobia. This suggests to me, given the sudden claustrophobia, that the sister hates non-traditional wedding spaces. The wedding is about the couple getting married, not the guests who come or don't come. My siblings were mad that we eloped, but I still didn't care all these years later. My sisters have gotten over it, my brother has not, and that's a big reason we don't speak. That's his prerogative. No skin off my nose. Have your awesome cave wedding and enjoy every moment of it. I'm getting messages from people not invited that I'm also a huge jerk. It always drives me crazy how every story is like, I told my grandma I'm full and don't want a second plate for dinner. Now every person I know is texting me saying I'm the worst person to exist. This doesn't happen in real life. You are the idiot and stop lying. Haha, ha, you apparently don't have a big family of opinionated busybodies. It sure does happen. Some people live to get into other people's business, give their unsolicited, uninformed advice, and be seen taking the right side in conflicts. It's exhausting to be in this kind of family, believe me. Count yourself lucky to be so unfamiliar with this dynamic. I still have cousins who won't talk to me because I didn't invite them to my wedding. I hadn't seen or talked to them in years, and my mom's family is huge. Fifteen cousins, and they pretty much all have kids. Family can be complicated. My parents live in a less developed country than I do, and my siblings and I all live in North America or Europe. When I got my new job, I did my budget and saw that I could send home roughly $1.300 a month without it affecting my comfort. I would still be able to save for my future and my mom and dad could retire. So when I was home, I set up a joint account for us. That way I could see if they needed more and ensure they weren't getting scammed. After about a year and a half, I started noticing a $200 transfer every month. I asked them about it, and they said he was having difficulties with his budget, so they were helping him out. My brother doesn't need help. He is a scholarship student. He receives a stipend from my home government to study abroad. What he wants is money to party, so I reduced the amount I gave them by $200. Obviously, they don't need it if they can afford to give it away every month. My mom called me when she noticed and was yelling at me for being a crappy daughter and sister. I asked her to tell me exactly how much money they contributed to my party fund when I was away for school, so that you know the answer is zero dollar. They also tried to talk me out of attending university in Canada. I'm not sure how common the idea of filial piety is in other cultures, but it's a big deal in mine. She went off about it. I told her that they didn't need the money and I had better ways to spend $200 than to gift it to my brother so he could get intoxicated with his friends more. She said that I'm treating them like children by restricting how they spend their money. I replied that I wasn't going to subsidize my brother through them, and from now on the amount they will get from me will be one $100, and that if they sent in money again, I would know and reduce their money by that amount in the future. My brother called me to complain about cutting off his money from our parents. I said that I hadn't. He was welcome to tell our parents to go back-to-back -back breaking jobs at their age to pay for his partying in London. Then they would have my money to live off of and their wages to pay for his drinking. My boyfriend is on my side, as are many of my friends. Most of my family and people from my culture think I'm being an idiot. However, my parents have only been spending on themselves for the last two months. Not the idiot. You could send it directly to your brother if you wanted to give him $200 a month. You don't have to give your parents money to make an end run, so you're giving your brother that $200. I agree with your logic. If they send $200 a month to your brother, that's money they don't need from you. The total effect is that you stop giving your brother $200 a month. One $300 a month? Girl, I'll adopt you. Also, let's admit there's a problem because Op is a woman, and she's expected to be submissive and modest, while it's accepted her brother can do whatever, even party all semester. If it were the other way around, her parents would never send her brother money so she could drink. Opie, how entitled are your parents behaving? 
To think that you only would need to contribute to their lifestyle is eye-roll worthy. Honestly, I hope you reduce the amount you give them as soon as your brother gets a job in his field. He needs to step up and support your parents as well. As it was, he was sponging off of your retired parents reducing their quality of life. Your brother needed a dose of reality. I'm a senior software engineer and work at a local software shop. We aren't super big, but we are profitable. It's a small company, and everyone knows each other well. I recently had dinner with my sister, whose daughter graduated from CS two years ago, and was a junior programming. She worked for Erobot, but got laid off recently. We talked about tech-related topics while we were having dinner, and she seemed passionate about the industry, so I mentioned that there were openings at my workplace. She then inquired about job referrals. Since we never really worked together, I told her I could do so, but I'd like to ask her a question to gauge her knowledge and would only refer her if she passed. I asked her a problem I knew on dynamic programming to use CS concepts to maximize the number of coins by opening boxes, which is quite similar to a popular problem on bursting balloons on LeetCode. She failed to produce an efficient answer within 45 minutes and only finally got it after an hour and a half after a hint. So I said I couldn't refer her, but she was free to apply on her own. My sister is now upset with me. She called me an idiot and said I should still try to help her and that it was unfair to test her on the spot. The thing is, I don't want to take any risks as if I did refer her. She would probably get hired as our interviews are straightforward and almost all refereed candidates get hired. But then if she performed poorly after being referred it would reflect badly on me. I know my question is unrelated to the job, but I still think it's a good way to test one's intelligence. You are the idiot. You deliberately set her up to fail by asking questions you knew weren't related to her work or the job. You wanted her to fail. You questioned her intelligence. What the heck? And probably left her feeling humiliated and stupid. She's your niece. Of course she wouldn't have the same level of experience and knowledge as someone decades older than her. If you didn't have a desire to refer her, you should never have brought it up. You wanted to show off and score points to make yourself feel superior, and your sister is right. You are a raging idiot. Exactly. There's no way a random question is a good measure of one's intelligence in the abstract. Your choice to ask her about something unrelated to the job means you never even gave her a fair chance. Your judgment was poor and your test was unsuited to the purpose. Dude, you are the idiot. She's even gave her a fair chance. Your judgment was poor and your test was unsuited to the purpose. She's not interviewing for you. Holy crap. I hope you never need a favor from her. Thanks for listening.